You want to know about my Luby pipe? Welcome to Chaos in a Crafter. Right, let's talk about the biggest part of the van build, probably any van build, the electrics. Now, I'm going to start off with a kind of big scary figure, which is I've gone for an unbelievably big and complicated electrical system in the van. Um, so I will show you on the, on the screen how much this has cost us so far, but it is a lot. I went to a system builder. There are lots of them out there. Uh, Noma, Vunked, uh, probably some more that I will again flash up on screen to let you know who's out there. But what they do is they are specialists in camper van electrical systems and they will take your specification, what you're looking to do and where you're looking to go, and then they will take that and transform it into a pile of electrical components for you. Um, I went with Noma and their system for me cost me just over £6,000. So the extra £2,000 has come from everything else that I've added, namely this Savvy Van system up top we've got here, plus my Starlink system and various other bits and pieces like our lights and our plug sockets and our USB chargers and extra cabling. Um, that is one downside to these system designers is they don't know exactly every single possible appliance you've got. So they give you a a, a good starting point for things like wiring, but they don't give you everything. Now, Vunked are quite good because if you go onto their website, they have a system builder, system designer, which you can put in how many days you want to be off grid, you can stick in what appliances you want to run, whether or not you want to be electric hookup, or, or um, whether or not you've got solar panels, if so, how much you've got, and they can you can sort of play with that and get an idea. This is the full list of products that Noma sent to me. Now I chose Noma because their instructions were some of the absolute best. The detail they went into was fantastic. They went system by system and showed you how everything needs to be pulled together, which for a novice was exceptional and was definitely worth the extra few hundred pounds my system cost. So let's have a little talk about what we've actually got here. Um, you'll see most of... By by the colouring, most of the blue, the Victron stuff here. Victron is the best stuff on the market. Um, it is also the most expensive, so read from that what you will. Whether or not it's worth it, I will leave that up to you. So whether or not you want to pay the extra over things like Renergy, um, and whether or not you want to go for different batteries. I went with Fogstar because again, they were one of the best. Maybe not quite as good as Victron, um, but they were considerably cheaper, but then they were better than some of the alternatives. So I went for, uh, I'll show you a picture on the screen now of what it looks like in the van, because I haven't got them here, but I've gone for two 280 amp hour, 24 volt batteries. So because we've gone for a 24 volt system, essentially that's the equivalent of having twice as much power as a 12 volt system in terms of battery capacity. So 280 amp hour at 24 volts would be the equivalent of 560 at 12 volts. So we've got the equivalent of 1120 amp hours of battery at 12 volts. That's not here, that's in the van already. It's the only thing I've installed other than running my wiring so far. But we have an inverter here, a 3000 watt inverter that will power everything on our AC system. So that's why we've got these consumer units here. One will take the feed from the electric hookup and coming off that one will be any appliances we want to run when we're only on electric hookup. So that will include my Truma combi boiler when we want it to run off the electrics. And then this side is will come off the inverter and this will have all our 230 volt appliances that we want to run in the van. So namely our induction hob and our plug sockets, the main things that will come off that. We've then got all sorts of different components over this side. We've got our bus bars, Lynx distributor, which is just, a, again, a fancy bus bar. We have two DC to DC converters here. So these are 24 volt to 12 volt DC converters, because like I said, our system is 24 volts. We chose a 24 volt system because it could keep cabling small and a lot of these components stay smaller at 24 volts. The downside is that if you want to use 12 volts for anything, you have to convert it. So we've got two converters here to step our voltage down for our LED lights and our 12 volt systems. We've got two Orion 
DC to DC battery chargers. These run off the van's alternator. They'll take power from the van when the van is running and recharge our batteries. And we have two of these 50 amp chargers. And then continuing around here, we have our solar system. So this is our MPPT. This is our smart solar charger. And we've got, again, double pole MCB to shut that off. And then we have our smart shunt to monitor our batteries alongside the Victron Energy uh, five centimeter screen so that we can keep an eye on everything. Um, and again, the servo is the brains of the operation as far as the Victron side is concerned. That pretty much covers off the majority of our main electrical system. We've obviously got uh, an abundance of fuses and uh, all these data cables to allow it all to talk to each other properly. But the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was at the back here. This stuff here is all savvy van. I had the option when building the van to either run switches all over the place, which requires a lot more wiring, or to try and use some kind of smart switch panel where you wire everything into a little box and then you just have one cable that runs off to a switch panel. I decided to go one step further and Savvy Van was the one I chose. I saw them at the NEC earlier this year and their stuff is brilliant. And they were having a, a sale, a deal on at the NEC. So I decided to snap up quite a lot. Now this fundamentally, it's a screen and the screen controls a lot of different functions and they're constantly adding new things all the time. So for example, this is a tank add-on. This allows you to control valves on the tanks, but also check your water level. This one is the Savvy Stance. So this one shows you at what angle your van is parked on to help you level it up. And the newest one is their LED driver. So this essentially takes all the feeds for your 12 volt lights and acts as a big switch panel, but it's a dimmer, dimmer switch panel and it can all be operated by this one point. And then finally, we've got the main screen itself and this can switch anything. So we've got, that will take both 12 and 24 volt systems and we can run our fridge and, um, and our diesel heater and anything else we want to switch through that. So that covers off that. The only other thing to add in is this is our Starlink. Um, so because Starlink has a regular 230 volt plug, which runs off to 48 volts I believe it is you need something to step up your voltage to the Starlink so again star 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 v mount these are the people I bought the actual mount that's holding the Starlink on the top of the van but they also sell the rest of this kit which allows you to wire it in with a little switch panel on it I probably won't use this switch in the end. I'm probably going to wire it through the Savvy Van panel, um, but it includes a little miniature version of this DC to DC converter, but steps the voltage up from 12 volt to 48 volt. And that means that you then your Starlink will work through this and we don't have to worry about running it off battery power or, or anything else. Um, so that's a little breakdown of all the various components we've got here. I have run all the wiring for the van prior to insulating, prior to putting our wall panels on. It was probably only the second or third job I did. And it's really important that you plan ahead for where you want everything. Put your insulation on the walls, then run conduits over the top of the insulation. You want it on top of the insulation so that if there's ever a problem, when you take the wall panel off, you don't have to start ripping out insulation. You can just take the wall panel off and everything's there and visible. So conduit with all your electrics running. You want to focus on what appliances are going to be in what location in the van and bring it back to a central point for me and probably for most people that is in the garage at the back. Now, my garage is especially small. Again, I'll show you a little picture of what that looks like, but it's very narrow. So I'm having to squeeze everything quite low down. Um, but you run everything back to the, the garage. For me, that mostly went through the top of the van to the rear pillars, down the pillars and out. And there was a lot of stuff that came from under the van, like our DC to DC chargers and all our tank sensors and stuff. They went under the van and then back up the rear pillars and out. And then we're going to wire it all from that point there. Now, this is going to be 
part one of probably a three-part video. The other two parts are going to be us actually building and wiring the thing. So the first thing for me to do is build my system board so as to take all these various things and put them onto a board. Um, I've got some beautiful hex ply which looks nice which we'll mount it all to. And then the final video will be us then putting that into the van and wiring everything up and testing it. Later on, just after this, I'm going to show you the other two things I've done early on in the build. One is installing my electric hookup point, which is a really slim line, little neat one that tucks down under the sills. And the final thing is then running those cables. So stay tuned to keep an eye for that and keep an eye out for the two other videos coming after where I show you everything else that, that gets done on the electrics. But you don't have to go to this extent. I spent £8,000. It's a lot of money. Uh, even with hindsight, I probably didn't need to spend as much as I did. And you definitely don't need to. There are sacrifices you can make. I'm travelling with four girls. All of them want to use the hairdryer. That is an enormous amount of power. Likewise, we wanted to be fully electric. So we wanted an induction hob. We've got a 12 volt air conditioner, which also draws a huge amount of power. So we had to make sure we had a system that could cope with all of that. And still we wanted to be off grid for potentially three or more days away from campsites. So we can't be reliant entirely on our electric hookup. You could easily save a lot of a lot of money. Most of my cost came in the things you don't think. The Savvy Van system cost a good few hundred pounds. You don't necessarily need two DC to DC chargers. You don't need to go to the expense of a 24 volt system if you're not going to do it. You can get a smaller inverter or you can have 230 that only works when you're plugged up to campsites. So you don't need to be able to have an inverter at all. So there's lots of different ways in which you can think of it. Um, I think about changing, think about saving money. Um, the other thing was these were very, very expensive. These were £50 each. So just have three of these is £150. Now these are USB-C ports. These are fast charging USB-C ports. It seems like everyone everywhere is still using the old fashioned USBs. So to get something that was USB-C, we... We had to go to Scanstruck because these are pretty much the only ones on the market. But again, if you can live without stuff like this, then you can save loads of money. But one final tip, if you take anything else away from this, the absolute best thing you can buy is a box of Wago connectors. So rather than going to the hassle of having to crimp up every joint, so instead of these little crimps, these are heat shrink, heat shrink crimps. You can save yourself time and effort and the pain of having to crimp everything by buying some of these. So these are just levers and they're designed to hand, they're designed to take vibration. These will work brilliantly. They also easy to disconnect. If you ever need to rewire anything, then you can just unclip these and move on. Whereas if you crimp anything, you've got to cut it out. Obviously, for the big thick cables, I'm gonna to have to crimp and we're gonna to have to crimp lugs onto the end of them as you would normally. But for your 12 volt system, for your little cables, Wagos are absolutely brilliant. Save yourself some time and effort and buy some of those. Um, and that's pretty much it for now. Let me show you what's coming up.